Welcome back to the True Crime series. Today we are going to be looking at the co-ed killer. If you have seen Mindhunters, you might have a clue who I'm talking about. Today we are going to be looking at Edmund Kemper. So let's take a look at Ed's early life. Ed was born in Burbank, California on December the 18th, 1948. As a child, his family is quite conservative. They had a place where they had chickens and Ed would befriend these chickens because he didn't have many friends. One day, his father decided to chop off two chickens' head and try to feed it to him for dinner. He refused and I think this definitely scarred him. Over time, he started to become numb to the beheadings of his friends. When he was nine years old, his parents decided to separate, which had a massive impact on Ed. The Ed ended up living with his mother and his two sisters, even though he was closer to his father. After the divorce, his mother became really bitter. She started to treat Ed worse and worse just because he was a boy and would favour his sisters over him. Ed used to have a bedroom on the top floor of the house, but his mother decided he would now live in the basement, where she would lock him in. She believed that he would hurt his own sisters. I'm not sure if this is due to the fact that he was very tall for his age. He was definitely a lot taller than a lot of his peers and he grew to six foot nine, which is very, very tall. Or maybe it's the fact that she hated men and she thought that all men would eventually hurt women. Or it could have been the fact that he killed the family cat twice. He beheaded the first family cat and the second family cat he also killed because he believed that it favored his sister over him. He also kept pieces of the cat in the closet where his mother would eventually find it. What a lovely Christmas present. Because they were quite a conservative family, there was a lack of toys within the family. Ed used to go to the library and read books. He would read about Vikings and World War II. He even came up with a game called the Gas Chamber, which he would play with his siblings, where one of them would be tied to a chair and have to escape before the gas enters the room. He also had a lot of dark fantasies, where he would use his sister's dolls by chopping off their head or their hands. He also recalled as a young boy he would sneak out of the house with a knife and go to his teacher's house and watch her through the window. Definitely not creepy at all. He also had multiple near-death experiences where his sister almost pushed him in front of a train and also into the deep end of the swimming pool where he almost drowned. At the age of 14, Kemper decides to run away to go and find his father and live with him. However, when he got there, he found that his father had a new wife and a stepson almost like he had been replaced. He then ended up going to live with his grandparents in a remote ranch in the middle of the mountains. His grandma was just as abusive as his mother and his grandfather had dementia. So let's take a look at Ed's victims. On August the 27th, 1964, age 15, Kemper got into an argument with his grandmother. He ended up storming out the room, grabbing a gun and shooting her in the head and in the back. There's also a suggestion that he might have stabbed her, but again, we don't know if there's evidence for this or not. When his grandfather returned home, Ed decided to shoot him in the driveway. His reasoning was that he didn't want his grandfather to find his wife dead. He then rung his mother and asked her what he should do, and she said to him that he needed to call the police, so he did. When the police arrested him and took him into custody, they asked him why he killed his grandparents, and he said, he just wanted to know what it would feel like to kill grandma. Kemper's crimes was deemed uncomprehensible for a 15 year old to commit. Psychologists found that he was paranoid schizophrenic and had a very high IQ. He was then sent to a hospital for mentally ill convicts. On December 18th, 1969, on his 21st birthday, he was released. The psychologist said that he should not be released into his mother's care as they believed that she was a massive impact on the way that he behaves. However, the judge overruled and sent him back to live with his mother. Ed decided that he then wanted to become a police officer. However, they would not let him. And no, this was not due to his previous crimes. This was due to his height. Apparently he was too tall to become a police officer which is crazy, I did not realise that was the case. <laughs> However, he would then become friends with police officers to almost live his dream of becoming one. Between May 1972 and April 1973, Kemper killed eight people. He would pick up female students that were hitchhiking, he would take them to isolated places, and he would either shoot them, stab them, strangle them, or smother them. 
He would then take the victims back home where he would decapitate them and perform sexual acts on them. He would then put them in bags and he would disperse them miles apart from each other. He would then listen to his cop friends and when they talked about these girls he would just say, oh, girls run away all the time, covering his own tracks. His first victims was Mary Ann Pice and Anita Lucheska. These girls were hitchhikers that he took to a remote area and killed. Some of his other victims included Akio Ku, Cindy Shaw, Rosalind Forpe, Alison Liu, Carnell Stamberg and Sally Hallett. So how was he caught? On April 20th, 1973, his mother came home and Ed bludgeoned her to death with a claw hammer. He had a lot of built up anger for his mother and this was finally time where he showed it. He would then decapitate her, perform sexual acts on her head, and then he would use her head as a dartboard. So yes, he really did not like this woman, and who's to blame him? He then invited his mother's best friend over. He would then strangle her to death and use the excuse that they had been on holiday together and they were just on vacation. He then drove for miles and miles, and he never heard anything on the radio of his mother's death. He then started to feel remorse for all of his victims, not just his mother. He then called the police and confessed to killing his own mother. He patiently waited for the police and as soon as they arrived he confessed to the other murders that he had done. He was then sentenced to 10 accounts of murder and he is still in prison to this day. So why might he have committed these crimes? Well I think one of the obvious reasons is that he had a very bad relationship with women. His mother and his grandmother were abusive towards him, especially his mother, who he spent a lot of time with. He definitely took a lot of his anger out on other women when he really needed to take his anger out on his mother. I think that explains why as soon as he killed his mother he turned himself in and felt so much remorse. He also found women very awkward, apparently he went on a date with multiple women and found it very awkward because he didn't really know how to talk to them. He definitely needed sexual pleasure from these women, however, I'm not sure he wanted a relationship with them. Another reason is that he had a very bad relationship with his parents. His mother definitely did not want him. She locked him in a basement and basically did not want him around at all and preferred his sisters, where his father had started a whole new family without him. He was definitely must have felt unwanted by his family, which is never a good thing for a child. Another reason could be his schizophrenia. I'm not saying that all people with schizophrenia are killers, but I feel like this might be one of the factors that helped in him killing others. Because he had multiple delusions and it's believed that when he killed his grandparents he was having a delusion. I don't feel like Ed knew what he was doing at the time when he killed his grandparents and that's why he felt so much remorse and called the police afterwards. He also showed antisocial behaviour from a young age. This could be the fact that his father beheaded his friends in front of him, the chickens, or it could be the fact that his parents were obviously very neglected towards him. This is why he acted out by killing the cats, beheading dolls and doing kind of scary games with his siblings. So overall I believe that Ed was created by his parents. As always I always believe that serial killers are made, they are not born and I feel like his parents had a massive impact on how he became to be the way he is. I feel like his height made him seem like a monster and his mother made him out to be, so maybe he became that monster. If you enjoyed this video please give it a like, that will really help me out, and if you're interested in true crime I do a true crime series on here once every month, so uh, subscribe to keep up with that, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!